You're looking at a zero tolerance one to one Ranger knife. This is a fixed blade tactical knife offered by Zero Tolerance, subdivision of Kershaw, of course, and it's a very, very stout blade. Let's talk a little bit though about the category and what we would use this knife for because it's very germane to the points I'm going to bring up against this knife. And you know, I try to keep it real, I always will. What category of knife is this? Yes, it's fixed blade, but it's also compact. The blade length is only four and a half inches long. That's not a lot of reach, so we have to say to ourselves, okay, I only have a four and a half inch blade, fixed, fixed blade knife. You know, is that primarily, primarily a defensive weapon? Uh, I would hope you would say no, because four and a half inches for a fixed blade knife is not a lot of reach. In fact, it sucks. Unless, let me give a caveat to that, unless it's a very lightweight blade. If we have a very lightweight blade that has a shorter blade length, but it's also very carryable because it's so lightweight, kind of like the mini tack from Cold Steel, then we're talking about something altogether different. That because it's so lightweight, it's very carryable. And as a last ditch emergency backup weapon, it functions quite nicely. Now, Back to philosophy on the ZT-121. Would you use this as a last ditch weapon? Well, surely you could, but there's one thing that's really going to weigh against it, pun intended, and that's the weight. This thing together with a sheath is 12 and a half ounces. That is stout. That is a lot of weight you're carrying around. And the reason is, is it's a big slab of steel. I mean, that steel, a quarter inch thick, S30V, excellent steel by the way, but it's a big slab of steel with some G10 handles slapped on it. That's why it's so heavy. The sheath isn't a lightweight either because it's very heavy duty too. Built of Kydex, not thermoplastic. So that's a tough sheath, nicely executed. I'll talk about that in a sec. So back to the question, is this an emergency last ditch weapon? Well, I would say no, it's too heavy. How about a fixed blade tactical knife? In other words, one that I can do a general, a general task with if I had to call upon it in a defensive role. Could I do it? You bet. It'd be a great slasher, albeit without a lot of reach. But if you do connect with a four and a half inch blade, it, it would be devastating. It's got that nice belly to it, the reverse sweep on, on it as it re nears the choil area. You bet. It would do a lot of damage if you connect with it. But it's twelve and a half ounces. So, um, if you're going to use a utility blade, you know, let's look at weight differences and I'm going to bring another model of knife in to show you the philosophy. Let's talk about the RAT3. And this is the Ontario offering, not the RAT brand. And I love this one too. too. And RATs are great too. The, the original RAT brand are awesome too. This is just the one I've got. This offers every bit as much utility as the 121. But guess what? It's less than half the weight. And it's in D2 steel. Very decent steel. But it's six ounces. So it's less than half the weight of the 121. The blade is exactly the same length. So it has all the same things going for it, good and bad, as far as the reach go. But it's an all around nice and lightweight tactical blade. It's very strong. The Rat 3 is an extremely strong knife. It too is a slab of steel with handles thrown on it. Thinner slab of steel, but that's why it's lighter. And guess what? That's the only width I need in this size knife. Now, maybe you are a really heavy duty user. Maybe you're opening ammo crates all day long and you need a prying fixed blade knife. Well, guess what? The Z ZT-121 would work very well in that situation. And in that type of scenario, I think it would beat the Rat 3 because it is so darn thick you'd be very hard pressed to bend this blade and you probably could use it in prying tasks if you needed to. Let me blow that Kydex off the blade. It kind of powders and gets on the blade. Anyway, so back to philosophy. What are you going to use a knife for? I think it's very heavy and I would never carry this knife. It's just too darn heavy. If Let's talk about defensive uses. If I was going to use a knife for defensive purposes and I'm willing that's an important word, willing to carry 12 and a half ounces on me. I'm going to go with something with a lot more reach to it 
kind of like my, one of my SOG government agents. Guess what? They're the same weight. These two knives weigh the same. Yes, it's not S30V steel, but in a defensive blade, it does not matter. It'll be momentary slashing or stabbing. And look at the difference in reach between those two blades. And, frankly, deadliness. With that sharpened upper clip, the sweep on that Bowie blade, it's a deadlier blade, if you ask me. And yet, these knives weigh the same. And I'm explaining this because I'm trying to show you why I would never carry this knife. Because if I'm carrying it for utility purposes, I'm going to go with something lighter like a Rat 3, which is every bit as good in a utility role. Or if I need a defensive blade with secondary utility capabilities like the excellent Saw Government Agent, sadly no longer in production, I'll go with it. And guess what? The knife itself, the Saw Government Agent versus the ZT-121 is a much more livelier blade in the hand. This is heavy. It's, and it's heavy. And anytime we have a lot of weight in our hands, it takes momentum to get it going and strength. And just by way of contrast, the government agent is a very fast blade. Yes, it's not the same steel, I know that. But it's very functional in the task I'm, I'm talking about. Has an excellent sheath too. I'll do a separate review on it later. So back to the ZT-121. I would say it's an extremely limited use blade. And let's talk about the applications of it. I've talked about that it's a short blade. It's only four and a half inches long. It's also very wide. And in my opinion, and this is just me, wide blades are not good utility cutters. They are very difficult to work with. And that's from me carrying them for years and years and years. I've just found that thinner blades are better in EDC rolls. And when I say thinner, actually I'm talking two dimensions. I'm actually talking the width of the blade this way and also the thickness. I find thinner blades just work better in utility tasks. Okay, but that being said, how's the curvature? It is nice. I mean, like I said, this would be a very good slashing knife. It would be deadly if you connected with it. I also think it would be an excellent skinning design. Very good. S30V is a superb steel. I won't say anything about that. There's a lot of my other videos I talk about it. The jimping on the blade and the thumb ramp are excellent. They're sharp enough to lock your, your thumb in and really do good. Deep finger choil here that's functional and it hides index finger. I like that. Then we have a rope cutter in the base of the knife. And just like I talked about in my SOG, I'm sorry, my Leatherman Charge TTI video, a cutter should be sharpened on both sides. And I can't test this blade because I'm not keeping it. So I can just look at it. But I can tell you right now that cutter would be very effective. Very effective. So now another hit on the 121. That is the blade and the handle length. It's very abbreviated. It's a tiny, tiny handle. And I find it uncomfortable. Again, my hands are are towards a larger size, but for a knife of this weight, man, we're talking about a 12 and a half ounce knife, I would want, and actually I would demand a bigger bigger handle than that. It just is not big at all. And especially on a blade that I might have to put some leverage on. If I hold it against the RAT3, again by contrast, the RAT3 handle is even bigger than the Zero Tolerance 121. I don't like the length of the handle. I do love the G10 scales. All the ZT models with their scales are superbly done. It's great texturing on that. Excuse me. Really nice job on the scales. And I like the OD scales as well. Those are handsome. If I had to take a choice, I'd prefer the Coyote Brown. I just love it. Excuse me, had to get a drink. So, G10, great handle design. Fastened with, I think, overly large hex bolts. That adds weight unnecessarily. We don't need hex bolts that big. That's more of a marketing ploy to make you think this knife is very strong, which it is. But they're too big. We don't need that. A little bit of jimping on the, on the very butt end. More aesthetic. A little bit of jimping here to grab your index finger, so to speak. I'm running out of time, so I'll make this quick. The sheath is excellent. It snaps in nice, has a retention strap. Also a quick attachment, quick release from American Sportsman's products. I like this attaching device. It's just like Blade Tech's, maybe a little bit lighter. But overall, the ZT-121 is too heavy, and the handle's too short. I have a lot better options than this knife at this weight. Sorry, 
keeping it real, nothing fancy.